Hey guys, welcome back. Today we've got another video about end games for you. Now I just saw a video with Hikaru versus an 11 year old Neil Saren solving this puzzle. And it amazed me so much that I knew I just had to share it with you. So it's White's turn to move and win the game. How is he gonna do it? As we can see, White has four possible moves here. Pawn to h4, King to c7, Pawn takes on a6, or Pawn to b6. Now which is the winning move here? If you said pawn to h4, right off the bat, unfortunately, this is going to end us in a draw because black is going to capture, and as we can see, a pawn race with both of them promoting at the same time. If you're thinking king to c7, then hey, this isn't a draw. It's actually going to be a lot worse. You're going to end up losing the game. It's going to be a win for black because now black won't take the white pawn, and he would simply just push it. And even if it might seem like both pawns are promoting at the same time, this wouldn't be the case because when black promotes, he would be on the diagonal to stop white's promotion on h8. Pawn takes on a6 would also lead to a losing position for white. Again, black wouldn't take the pawn and he would just push it to b5 again. Even if both promote at the same time, black has this nice little skewer here with queen to b8. So we see that the winning move is actually an unnatural one in this position. It ends up being pawn to b6, willingly giving up that pawn. Now in this position, the engine move is to take the pawn, leading to a position where white would promote and black would try to promote one of his own pawns as well. Okay, but we're going to analyze the move king to b8, and you're going to see why by the end of the video. Now the next moves are just the pawns rushing to promote, and we arrive in this position, what would you play here as white? Because if your first instinct was to take the black queen, then this would end the game in a stalemate. So we need to find another move, and let me tell you, only one move is going to win the game for white here, with all the others drawing it or potentially losing it. So pause the video if you need, and if you want to challenge yourself, try and figure it out on your own, and let me know in the comments if you did manage to find it. Now we can plainly see that we need to make a queen move, because if we don't, black is simply going to take it. But where exactly do we need to move it to? Well, let me help you a little and give you some hints, finding the correct square for the queen. Here, White's plan is eventually to checkmate with a discovery check by moving his king to the 7th rank. But he can't do that now because Black would take the queen, so he needs a square that would keep that threat active, but also restrict Black's queen's movements. This is why the only possible square in this situation, it's g8 right here. Now if White moves the queen to f8, Black would have this crazy queen sack on a3 that would save his game. If White takes, it's stalemate. And if he tries to move his queen to the 7th rank, black would simply check on d6, take our pawn the next turn, because the checkmate threat is no longer there. And if the queen remains on the 8th rank, let's say h8, this would actually be a losing position for white, because the queen d6 check, king moves to e8, queen to e6, and after king to f8, black would force a queen trade with queen to c8, and white won't be able to stop black's pawn from promoting. Okay, so... We saw how queen to f8 unfortunately loses the advantage for white. But what about queen to e8? Well, in this case, black's defense would be queen to g7. And no matter where the queen goes, black is going to check and repeat moves over and over again. But how does g8 win the game, you might ask? Well, let me show you. First of all, black can't give any checks because white would step to the 7th and it would lead to a discovery checkmate. Second, this also stops queen to g7, black's defensive resource in the e8 case. Okay, but what about a3? That's pretty easy. King to d7, and it's a forced checkmate in two moves. But now, after queen to g8, black's only real defense here is going to be queen to a2, again, baiting into a stalemate. So what would you play in this position as white? The winning move in this new position is actually going to end up being queen to e8. Now, isn't chess kind of incredible? I mean, a move before this move would have drawn the game for us. But now, it turns it into a winning position. Well, if we had moved back to h8, that position was losing for white. It's incredible, it's really just incredible. So we can all now see why this is a winning position, right? If black checks us on d2 or d5, king to e7 ends up being a discovery checkmate. If he tries to exchange queens on the e-file, we can simply take it. Because black can move to a8, and it won't be a stalemate now. And if queen moves to c2, trying to block the checkmate with c1, we simply check and checkmate because our king protects the queen. But wait, it's not over yet. Black can still play queen to a4. 
trying for the third time with the same defense. He's pretty resilient, not gonna lie. Now, what would you play in this situation as white? The correct answer here is to start attacking, and this would lead to a really beautiful position. Now, I hope here you found queen to e5 check. The king is then forced to a8 over here. And for the last challenge of this puzzle, again, white has only one move now to win the game. Let me know if you can spot this one already. Here, the brilliant move for white, it ends up being queen to h8. The queen goes back to her starting square, but this time white has an unstoppable checkmate in three moves. It might look like white's queen did a little bit of triangulation here. Now, black doesn't have anything up their sleeves anymore, and no matter what they try, the end result is just plain inevitable. If they move their queen along the A file, king to D7 or E7 is gonna be a discovery checkmate. The reason why we stepped back to H8 is that with that move, white's queen defends both checking squares of black over the white king. That's the D4 square and the H4 square. If black now tries to check the king, white would just capture because it's no longer gonna be a stalemate since black can shuffle between A8 and B8. Even the last defense with queen to F4 is gonna to fall to queen to A1. Black blocks with queen to A4, we take king to b8, and queen to a7 is a checkmate. It's honestly a beautiful puzzle. I showed this variation instead of the engine one because I feel like this is a much more natural way for a player to end the game. And it was honestly way more challenging, where white could lose the advantage really, really easily if they didn't play the top, top engine move. Now let me know what you think about it, and let me know if you actually did manage to solve it. We'll see you in the next one.